All right, guys, happy Monday and a warm welcome back to the garage and the restoration of my 1968 Triumph TR250. I've just got our uh, project list uh, on the table here that we created on March 15th, 2021. And uh, let's just mark a few things off here since the last time we checked the list. So windscreen painting and trimming, that was completed. Uh, the trimming part was completed on the last, the previous video and the windscreen painting was completed prior to that. The windscreen glass install, I'm still waiting on the uh, seal to arrive that was ordered on March the 10th. So that's taking some time to get here. So we can't complete number six yet. Number seven, the Surrey backlight painting. You've seen that we've created uh, or finished that project. So uh, the Surrey backlight install is kind of on hold and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. There's something that needs to happen before we get to that point and that is point number nine, the interior panel kit install and we'll go into a little bit more detail about that. And before we go any further in this video I just want to recognize Moss Motors as a partner and sponsor of this channel has provided me with the deluxe interior panel kit in black with white piping for my TR250 project. So once again, thanks to Moss for partnering and sponsoring the channel. We'll get around to unboxing that and talking about part numbers in a little bit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do before we get ready to uh, unbox the uh, aforementioned kit is we wanna do a little bit of uh, additional sound deadening in this area back here. You can see the um, factory I'm going to call them asphalt shingles that were applied here on the rear shelf. But we're going to overlay that with a bit of uh, fat mat, which I have here on the table, just getting ready to be cut. And we're going to do some more on the rear shelf, and we're going to do some on the kick plates of the rear shelf here as well. And we'll get that stuck on there before we continue on with the uh, first thing we're going to do probably is the wheel arches. And that is the most difficult part of doing the interior kit. So if you can figure out the wheel arches, you're pretty much golden, I think, for the rest of the way. All right, let's unpack this together. This is part number 645-155. It's a deluxe interior panel kit. This is black with white piping. This is for the 68 TR250 and I believe the 69 TR6. So I've uh, got my razor blade handy and we're gonna carefully unpackage this. And have a look at the contents. Uh, just as an FYI, I've got my old panel kit beside it here on the table. I always have my old panels for reference. They're always good to keep the old panels, never throw anything away. They're good to reference the old uh, um, installation uh, areas and check out where the old uh, holes were for the fasteners, etc. That's why I like to keep those. All right, so. Hopefully I've got you in frame over there. So it comes with a roll of vinyl. So if you can see that there, I think you probably can. So full roll of uh, vinyl. 
Uh, I believe this is for areas like the uh, B post that needs to be covered, any of the areas that need to be covered with vinyl. You can cut that yourself from that roll. It's got the, uh, the back panel, which looks very nice. Okay. Then we've got the uh, door panels themselves. Beautiful. And these are on a, uh, they call this a marine board or a marine plywood. So it looks very nice. Okay. Beautiful. And the second panel. Beautiful. Then we've got the uh, wheel arch covers, not the arch covers, but beside the arches, so behind the B post. Again, very nice. Two of those. Then you have the wheel arch covers themselves, which I mentioned are the uh, apparently the trickiest bit to trim. So here they are. And nice white piping. So we'll unwrap those. Two of those. Then you have the uh, foams to apply those wheel arch covers. They are pre-cut, which is nice. So two strips for the tops of the arches. And these are the side of the arches. And then these are for the um, little strengthener pieces at the bottom of the B post. So those look very nice actually with the cardboard insert and they fold over something like that. We'll show you how to install those a little bit later. So there is the deluxe interior panel kit. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. So it also comes with a nice little note by the uh, person who uh, handcrafted these uh, panels. So that's quite nice. And it comes with the uh, full um, screw kit for the actual panels themselves and this is the door panel clip kit nicely packaged individually so we'll put those to good use once we get to that point in the restoration and they were nice enough to throw in some bonus items for me to try out this is a flexible uh, battery powered light so we'll put that to good use you can never have enough light on your project so this is uh, Moss part number 386-460 Flex light two or flex it 2.0 flexible flashlight. So we'll try that out, and then they know that I like hats. So got a nice uh, TR3 ball cap, part number 219-937. So we'll uh, wear that with pride, and a nice Moss motoring car driver's cap, cap, part number 217246 in blue, navy blue to match my car. And of course got the nice Moss logo on the back. So we'll put that to uh, good use once we get the car on the road. We'll be driving in style. Okay, in addition to the uh, deluxe panel kit, Moss has also sent me some seat belts. These are two-point seat belts. These are 222-235. Uh, they are a two-point uh, seat belt versus the three-point. I prefer in the TR250 since it has the low back seat similar to what my TR3 has. I prefer the uh, two-point lap belt in that particular uh, setup, so we're going to go with this. Just a quick note, they come in different colors, so have a look at their website, mossmotors.com. They come in a long and short version. This is the long version. It has a 44-inch clasp and a 30-inch latch. Uh, the short version has a 40-inch clasp and a 20-inch latch. So whatever your preference is, you can order it online. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the order of assembly, and this might vary a little bit because I have the backlight, uh, which makes the installation a tiny little bit different, I believe, than standard. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to put the uh, wheel arch covers on, um, and I think that's pretty much standard with uh, most cars. We also need to do a little bit of trimming on the uh, B post with the uh, vinyl. We also need to cover the uh, bottom of these B posts. Um, I'm going to call them stiffeners. We need to do that at some point. The last thing that we're going to do is the back panel installation because we need to fit the backlight and tighten that down 
And then the back panel goes actually on last and it fits up in a slot that's on the back of the aftermarket backlight. I'm not sure if it's the same for the factory backlight, but there is a space reserved where the panel will actually just slide up and tuck in behind the aftermarket backlight. I should also mention that there are full installation instructions on the Moss Motors website. I'll put a link in the description below of how to install not only the panel kit, but also the carpet kit in these cars. So there is a good guide there. Now, I may not necessarily follow that 100%, but it is a, a definitely a good guide to do it. I've done a few of these cars and I kind of have my own method to do them. So some of the uh, things that you see me doing may vary slightly from the Moss Motors installation guide. So I thought you might be interested in some comparisons of the old that came out of the car versus the new. So here's the uh, panels that go behind the B post up on the sides. So up in that area there above the wheel arch. So here is the old a little uh, worse for wear versus the new. So that's a bit of a comparison there. Okay. Here is the old, let's see if I can get this quickly here. Wheel arch covers. I've seen better days. There's the old backing on the wheel arch covers. Door panels. Again, these looked pretty homemade by the previous owner. I believe he tried to rescue these by putting them on some um, new board and uh, didn't work particularly well. But there is the old door panel versus the new door panel. So a significant difference in those two panels. That's going to make one heck of a difference. So that's a big difference. And then we'll just get to the back panel. So here is the back panel. and. Let's go for the new back panel comparison. Old back panel. Again, I think this has been... Well, that actually looks original on the back. So it doesn't look like that's been replaced. That looks like an original. And there is the new panel. So looking nice and fresh. Can't wait to get them in the car. All right, the first thing we're doing is we're just uh, removing a bit of material from the back of the wheel arch covers. And we're just trimming down the edge to remove a little bit of the material here on the back of the, uh, the beading. Um, on the back here, you can see I've already snipped this off compared to this. So we're gonna do the same on this. We're just gonna remove some material you know, we don't want to obviously go through the stitching because that's going to obviously separate the panel. But we want to get it as close as we can comfortably to remove as much of this material as possible so it lays a little bit better once we get to install it on the actual wheel arch itself. So that's what we're going to do now. I don't really necessarily want to do it on camera. I need to concentrate. So I've got a brand new pair of uh, scissors. I suggest that you have a nice pair of sharp, heavy-duty scissors to do this. And I've actually purchased specifically for this project this pair of uh, whisks or vis uh, scissors uh, intentionally made for this kind of uh, work um, from Home Depot. They're nice and sharp and uh, the nice big hand holds for my big hands. So we'll put these to good use. pieces of masking tape in order to try to figure out where we want the beading to lay and we want it to be uh, equal on both sides we want it to be straight up and down obviously with the uh, black uh, piping it's going to be very visible if this is crooked uh, probably 
I think this is probably the most visible out of all the different colors you could get, black versus white. So you got to kind of get this right, uh, otherwise it's going to be uh, bothersome to myself and I'm sure to others who see this car in person. So we'll try to get it as good as possible. So I've run a couple of lines of tape where I think the beading should be and I've taken some measurements of where the top foam padding should go according to where this beading strip is going to lie and what I'm planning on doing is I won't butt the two pieces of foam up I'll actually leave a channel for this beading to lay inside to lay down so the uh, top piece of foam will go to about the middle of that tape or just on the outside of that tape and then the side piece of foam will come up to it but will leave enough of a gap to lay this beading in there and hopefully that gap is going to be a straight up and down line. That's what we're trying to achieve anyway. So we'll go ahead and we'll trim that foam up and glue one side at a time. And we'll work our way slowly and carefully to be able to get this done properly. Alright guys, now Tuesday and back on the wheel arch uh, cover installation. You might see there that I've added a piece of foam that's actually a sandable foam just to take out the uh, little divot from the three-point harness pickup that the previous owner uh, ran with. So that's just smooth that wheel well out a little bit so we don't get a little bit of a dip there in the uh, cover. So uh, we have measured that out. We've cut the foam and we're just about to apply it. You can see that we've got adhesive there and I've got adhesive on the back of the foam. We're just about getting ready to make them up. Then we will work on the side foam. We have measured where the actual um, groove is going to be in the foam for that uh, piping to lay down inside. So we'll bring you back once we get the uh, side piece of foam uh, glued in there and I'll show you what that groove or that relief area looks like uh, before we get to applying glue to the back of the actual wheel arch cover. Alright we've got the uh, foam glued to the wheel arches so we're just going to start working on the covers and what I generally will do now is uh, lay the bead in the groove and uh, glue that down and work my way down the groove line to make sure that the bead fits directly in the groove that I've already run. And then we'll start stretching it from the left and the right and pulling it across to the uh, side of the car and down to the floor. And we'll make some relief cuts in the uh, vinyl as required as we go along to be able to stretch it out. So that's the uh, process that I do. So I've already glued this top edge and we're going to start laying the cover in at the top and uh, we'll bring you back when I got a little bit done. Alright guys, now Thursday night, just coming up to 6 p.m. and I finally got one of the uh, wheel arch covers installed. Again, I found it very difficult to keep that seam straight up and down and to uh, keep it fairly wrinkle free. Actually, it doesn't look too, too bad. Those wheel wells themselves had a lot of undulations in them and uh, Probably could have used another foam over, but uh, some of the areas you won't see. You can actually see where there was a piece cut in down here, but again, the seat will block that area. So other than that, it looks pretty good. I was really concerned about getting the seam straight and not seeing any waves in that, so that's not too bad. There's a few little wrinkles here up the top that I'll probably try to get out a little bit more. But other than that, it actually doesn't look too, too bad. I think I can live with that. So uh, we will move on to the other side and uh, we'll learn from our experiences over here. I found that it was easiest to move uh, to work from the bottom up. So that's what I started doing was gluing down the bottom in the center and then moving out to the sides and then as I got that seam straight on the bottom I then um, I moved up and moved up and moved up in little uh, sections and glued it as I went and I finished with the uh, the side section and glued that down to the floor. So I think that looks pretty good. I don't know if it's coming out on camera or not, but it looks pretty straight up and down to me. I've been sort of standing at the front of the car and uh, seeing if that looks okay as far as the angle is concerned. And as far as I'm concerned, that's about as good as I'm going to get. So, we'll live with that. And uh, let's move on to the driver's side. Alright, we're just in the process of putting the foam on the driver's side wheel well. And this is the way I did it on the passenger side that seemed to work pretty well. I'm laying the foam on and uh, then running a tape line where I want to put the groove in for the piping and then we'll cut back the foam. I haven't glued quite to the edges of the foam so I'm still able to lift that a little bit. 
So we'll cut the groove for the uh, piping and then we'll uh, glue both sides of the foam to the body tub before we attempt to uh, start gluing the cover on. And again we'll check our line once we cut our groove based on our tape line. Alright guys, welcome back to the garage. Friday, April the 2nd, 2021. Good Friday. Happy Easter for those of you who celebrate it. Anyway, we're just picking up where we left off last night. We managed to get the uh, driver's side wheel arch cover installed and it doesn't look too, too bad. Not too, too many wrinkles. A little bit lumpy where that uh, seat belt uh, third point hookup would be. I did try to add a little bit of extra foam and uh, shave it down a little bit, but uh, there's still a little bit of a depression or you can sort of still see a little highlight where that mount would be. Same on this side, so at least it matches. So I'm happy with that. The uh, seams are straight or as straight as I could get them and they're at a point where I can live with it. So that's, where the, that's the point where I try to get to. It's not necessarily perfection, but it's at a point where I can actually live with it and move forward. So on to the next step. So a few more things to do in this area. We need to add a uh, vinyl trim strip to the A post that wraps around to the outside and then that will be covered with the, uh, the trim that goes around the door. So we've got to do that. We've got to do the uh, wrap around bottom uh, B post uh, stiffener caps. We'll get to those. I brought out the carpet strip for the sill carpet because I believe that need, might need to be done before I do the uh, the B post sill uh, or the B post reinforcement cap. So we've got that. We've got the rear shelf carpet out. Um, we've got the side panels to do and the back panel to do, at least temporarily. So uh, we'll get busy. Let's grab those parts. All right, the next area we're going to concentrate on is this little area of uh, the B post that needs a vinyl strip applied. And uh, I've just fitted up the side panel just loosely to see what's visible once that panel is applied. I've also just uh, loosely fit that wraparound uh, piece of vinyl and uh, cardboard that fits on that uh, gusset piece. And uh, it looks like I'm pretty much going to have to cover most of the uh, face of this and go back a little bit for it to be hidden by this uh, side panel once that's applied. So we'll um, cut a piece of vinyl extra wide and we will start gluing it. We will glue it around to the front side here as I mentioned that the uh, where it's attached will be hidden by a trim piece that goes along the entire door length so a fuzzy seal actually will cover that. So I'm not too concerned as long as we don't make that overlap too wide that it's not covered by that fuzzy seal. Alright, we're just going to clean the area up and probably do a little bit of masking tape because we need to apply glue and we don't want to get glue where we don't want to get it. So we'll uh, take some precautions in order to do that. And then we'll uh, cut that piece of vinyl and we'll apply it on both sides. Alright, there's the piece of material that we've cut for that B post. And we've just applied some glue here. And we're just waiting for that to set up and then we'll form that best we can. We're going to have to do a little relief cuts around this area down in here. But we'll get there shortly after we get the bottom affixed. Actually we'll probably try to affix it to the flat panel first. And then we'll work on the corners down here and then the wrap around. Alright, so we've got that first piece of material applied to the flat face. And then just wrapped around nicely and trimmed around that gusset. And we're just about to wrap it around the edge and glue it to the outside of the B-post. And we're going to trim a little bit of the uh, vinyl away. And we've got a little bit too much. We only want about a quarter inch wrap around. So we'll just trim that a little, a little bit. We haven't glued the top yet because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to finish this at the top. Since I have the, uh, the Surrey top, I don't require this fitting here. So I may just wrap this around and glue it here, but we'll see. Anyway, first job is to wrap that and to fasten it to the outside of this B-post, so we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll do a little bit of masking in order not to get glue everywhere, and uh, we'll wrap that and pull it tight. Alright guys, there's the first strip of material done and fastened, and I think it looks pretty good. So it seems to be adhering pretty tightly to the B-post. I've got the uh, relief cuts in the right place, and we've got it wrapped around on this edge. So you can just see it there. So pretty smooth. There are a few undulations in the uh, B post where there are some previous repairs done. Let me just get a little bit of light on this subject for you. So that's what it looks like there. 
again that will be covered. Um, if you do get any glue overspray and you need to remove it, mineral spirit seems to be the ticket to do that. So uh, have some mineral spirits handy in case you get any glue overspray where you don't want any. Alright, let's move on to the other side. We'll finish that uh, B post and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright guys, we've got the uh, B post on the driver's side finished with that piece of vinyl. So now we're going to work on these little gusset pieces at the bottom. What I've done is I've just pulled out the carpet here and I wanted to see how it finishes here on the bottom of this gusset piece and it does have a nice finished edge here so I'm basically going to put the gusset piece on first which basically fits in like this I mean to get a better angle of this move this carpet out so this basically goes like this and then wraps around the top here there's a little folded edge that needs to be glued here on top and then that gets wrapped around and tucked in tight on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and fit these while we can and uh, they can be a little bit difficult to keep in place so lots of glue and uh, we'll make sure we let that glue set up well before we attempt to affix these. Alright and just a quick look at the back side of those uh, B-Post gusset covers you notice that this is not folded are pre-folded so you actually will need to fold this edge over. I believe it feels like it's scribed. Once you start folding it you can actually see the brake line. So you will need to fold this over and uh, like I said it's got to wrap around the top of this uh, piece here and then glue onto the other side. Alright there is that uh, panel fitted on the bottom. Looks good on the inside and uh, we got it as tight as we can on the outside. There it looks good. Real estate's a bit of an issue here when you go to put the seal on around the bottom you gotta make enough room to get that seal in there so it can be a little bit tight so we've trimmed that back as best as we could and we have a little bit of gap for the seal to go in there so we should be good so I'm happy with that let's move on to the driver's side we've got it all glued up ready to go just waiting for the glue to flash off and we'll do the same process a couple of things it's important to have sharp razor blades to trim and these little uh, pinpoint Exactos work really well to trim in areas down here, for example. And these blue glazing sticks are coming in awfully handy to uh, jam material in down to like little crevice areas down in here. So that glazing sticks come in handy uh, numerous times, let's say. So a couple uh, tips there. Sharp razor blades. Alright guys, we're going to start playing with the uh, side panels. I'm not sure what they're actually called. The wheel arch trim side panels that's what we'll call them got the old panel just attached and what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the uh, locating holes along the top of the old panel and checking to see if there are still holes in the body tub and there are actually two holes still here so one here one here I've just actually got a fastener in there temporarily and we've just marked our location out for this front fastener which is no longer here because we did some metal work here so we're going to uh, drill the appropriate or not drill but punch the appropriate holes in the new panel and we'll affix it to these locations be right back alright passenger side panel has been installed and I think it fits perfectly and looks great so we will now move on to the driver side and we'll do the same process. We'll get that fitting and then we'll come back for a quick update and move on to the next step. Alright guys, driver's side panel is now installed. Got a little bit of a wrinkle back here but I'm thinking I can probably work that out once I get the Surrey backlight on. I can probably pull that a little bit tighter to get rid of that wrinkle. I did uh, move the uh, wiring harness from the uh, rear of the car uh, behind the panel and kind of, it basically runs along the uh, inner sill on the uh, driver's side here. So we've just got that uh, just resting there and it'll be hooked up to the uh, main harness up front once we tuck it under this uh, sill carpet strip that gets uh, glued in place there. So that is ready to go when we get to it. Next step in the process is to uh, glue this um, transmission hump uh, cover, uh, carpet cover on. So we're going to do that now. We're going to put a little bit of... Uh, underlay underneath that and we're going to glue this area down. The whole rear shelf actually gets glued down. We're probably not going to do that at the moment because I still need to have access to the body mounts. We haven't tightened those down uh, completely yet so I want to make sure I can access those so I may glue it down partially but just leave access to those fasteners. 
All right, so let's glue that uh, that hump carpet down and uh, we'll come back. All right, we've just got the carpet sitting loosely in there and the reason I've got it sitting loosely is because I've got the back panel in my hand. I'm just uh, positioning the back panel in place and I want to make sure I have the right height and obviously the carpet is going to keep it a little bit off that rear deck. So I've uh, put the carpet in, put the back panels in and you can see that the marine plywood on the back panel is pre-drilled for holes although they're not stuck through the vinyl. So what I've done is I've actually uh, gone ahead and I've marked these out on my uh, interior panels here. See the, that metal framework or those stiffeners are basically attachment points for this back panel. So we've just marked those out, we've drilled them, and uh, we're just about to work on the left hand side here, the passenger side. We're going to fit the uh, two bottom fittings and the one middle fitting. Then we're going to go across to the other side and mark those ones out and do the same thing. We'll remove the panel drill those then fit those. Alright guys welcome back it's another day it's uh, Easter Monday and we're just putting the finishing touches on the uh, back panel installation after having a bit of a busy weekend of doing non TR250 stuff. We are back just uh, playing around a little bit and we've got that back panel affixed to the uh, locating points now that we drilled previously in the uh, metal backing pieces. Um, so that looks good. And now just a quick uh, notation, and I think I touched on it earlier, this top piece will not be screwed into the metal of the body tub at the top as this actually slides into a groove or a recess in the aftermarket backlight that I'm fitting to this car. All right, we're going to call this as uh, end to part one since I can't continue on any further. And the reason for that is I still have not received my windshield uh, seal to be able to put the glass in, nor have I received my bottom seal to affix the windscreen to the body tub. The reason I need to get that done is because the Surrey backlight is located by aligning the Surrey backlight with the hard top panel, and that needs to be affixed to the windscreen in order to get the Surrey top lined up to be bolted down. So this back panel will come out, and the Surrey top or the Surrey backlight will go on, and then this panel will go back up on and slide underneath that recess and be affixed with the screws here that I have. There's five locating screws on the bottom of this panel. So we'll continue on the next series with the um, Moss uh, Deluxe uh, interior panel kit by doing the, the door panels. The door panels are the only remaining item to be installed from the kit. So I'm looking forward to doing that in the near future once the doors are painted and ready to go. All right, one more quick walk around before we go for this episode. And uh, so you can see the complete package. Again, the carpet's just in there loosely for the moment. We'll get that glued down in a little while. We're gonna have to cut some, uh, do some custom uh, touches down here to get the carpet to lay out around those custom frame pockets. So I'm pretty happy with the uh, my install. Again, there's a few wrinkles here and there. I'm sure the heat is going to help to uh, iron those out a little bit. I do have two more locating holes to drill, or not drill, but punch, uh, for the front Surrey backlight uh, mounting. There's two tabs that come down, so we'll have to do a uh, location punch out on each side, but that's not too bad. They're already pre-punched on the back side of the panel. Again, this panel will be pulled tight underneath that recess of the backlight, so you won't see that gap. And there's a few wrinkles over there, but again, I'm not too unhappy with that. The seams are pretty straight. So yeah, overall, looks great, in my opinion. So this will be the end to part one of the uh, deluxe interior panel kit installation from Moss Motors. Again, thanks to Moss for providing the kit for me to work with today. We'll pick it up on part two when we get to uh, installing the door panels. That's the only two panels remaining from the interior panel kit. And uh, the doors have yet to be painted, so we'll pick it up in part two. Uh, I'm going to also put a link to the first set of videos I did with Moss Motors in partnership. I will put the part numbers down below in the description as well as the um, installation guide, not only for the interior panel kit, but it's got, also got an installation guide for the interior kit and the carpet kit. So if you're redoing your seats, it's a good reference. Or if you're installing carpets, it's also a good reference. So that will be in the link below, as well as all the contact information for Moss Motors, as well as the website. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, thanks for commenting.